g'day. Welcome to Easy Jeezy, Map and Made Breezy. Now I've got someone come to the door really quickly uh, to deliver some trees and I can't miss them. Okay, so if I need to duck off, don't be alarmed. I'll be back. But either way, I've got to be quick. So let's get started. Today we're looking at uh, some slightly jazzed up uh, maps. Okay, making them look a bit, bit fancier. Okay, a bit more luxurious, a bit more delicious. Okay, so uh, so let's get started. Um, what I've got here, I've got my sample points from Orca Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Okay, and I'm just gonna, I wanna make a map just to, to show the location of these, where they are in relation to uh, the rest of the country. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off by adding a new map. Okay, we've already got a map. Let's add a new map. Let's click on insert new map. New map. You're going to see why I'm doing this in, in, in a little bit. Okay, but I'm going to double click here. The title, and I'm going to call it Insert Map. Okay. Then go back to my map, and I'm going to go on my layout. It's sort of horizontally uh, laid out the our sample points. So let's choose landscape A4. Okay, in insert, let's go to our map frame. Don't want to choose my insert map. I want to choose my map. Okay, and there it is. And let's fill in the whole page. Here we go. You can see some of the points are missing. So let's right click on our sample point. Go zoom to lay and that will center everything nicely for us. Okay, now on insert, let's go through our usual map features and add them in. So north arrow, that one there. Standard one, click on it, yeah, it's too big, and then double click. Okay, I'm just gonna move this across here. Let's do that again, double click. Okay, click on the options, get a symbol, click on that. Let's add a little halo, so the little, a little surround, little white surround, you can change the size, change the color, etc. Again, just so it stands out uh, against the background. Okay, so we've got our north arrow, our scale bar. Simple one like that. Let me draw it in. Right here, double click. Okay, uh, let's change it to meters. It's more appropriate in this, uh, this scale. Uh, click on the properties and go down to alternate bar two. We don't want it to be transparent, so let's click on it and let's change the color to white. Okay, and that applies. So you can see it fills it in again so it stands out. Go back. Let's click on the text symbol and let's add a halo to the text symbol. Now we'll see you can play around to how it's content with all these sort of uh, settings. Get it just right. Okay, there we go. It's pretty good. Okay, but let's just uh, stretch it out. So it gives us nice round numbers. Okay, there we go. Let's put it about there. Okay, there's our scale bar. Let's add a legend. Not really going to show much here, but let's add it in anyway. It's just going to show our sample points. And we can double click on that. Let's show the title. And uh, let's go through the display and let's add a border. Let's add a nice boring white background so it stands out and again. Oops. So do that maybe over here or something. Next thing, let's add our title. So in insert, we're going to our rectangle text. It's going to be our text up here. And let's say, okay. The Janeiro Brazil sample point locations. Okay, In my format tab up here, I can change the font and the size and etc. The color, and the century gothic, I'm going to say bold italic, and I'm going to make it say 26. Okay, now if I click over here on the properties or format. Okay, this little button here it should pull out the panel, and I can format that text symbol with a bit more control. So, first of all, I'm going to center it all, and I'm going to add a halo. Okay, so the halo, let's choose the white one. 
There we go again, just so it stands out a bit against the background. Okay, so we've got our title, North Arrow, got our scale bar, got our legend. Next thing, let's add in uh, latitude, longitude. Okay, so we click on map frame. Let's go back to insert and let's add a grid. Let's go for this first grid here. Whoa, that's a bit over the top. Okay, uh, so we need to edit that. Now you can see grids appeared over here in our uh, contents. Let's right click on that, and properties. Okay, first things in the options, let's untick automatically adjust. That way we get more control over all this. And let's go back to components. So we've got our four components, we've got our labels, our numbers for latitude and longitude, we've got the ticks, the little dashes, and we've got our grid lines, the actual lines there. First of all, in labels, let's change interval to 10 seconds. Should not be for both, latitude and longitude, there you go. Um, let's go ticks, do the same thing. Okay. We find this we can. No, we can leave it at two actually. Let's, let's leave it at two. Grid lines, uh, let's change those to 10 definitely. So it's not so busy. And there we go. Okay. And with our grid lines, uh, we've got our symbol here. Let's click on that symbol there. And let's change the color. Okay. We can go to color properties here and maybe we can drop it down to maybe, let's see, 60. 4% transparency. And click apply. That way it fades into the background, but it doesn't disappear completely. Okay, so we've got our grid lines right. Uh, next thing, our labels currently outside our what's going to, outside our uh, print area, so they're not going to be exported. So let's go to our offset and let's bring it into a negative number. So like negative one, for example. Okay, and now you can see they've moved inside our map. Don't, they don't really stand out very well though. So let's change that. Let's click on the little symbol there. And let's add our good friend a halo. And apply. Delicious. Next thing, let's go back. Okay, now we don't need these, or I don't, I don't want these on north, south, east, and west sides. So I'm going to take them off the north side. Okay, so I'm tick there with it visible, and I'm going to take them off the west side. So do there. Okay, just leaving at these two sides here. Next thing, uh, our ticks. So let's go for our, this one here. These big ticks here. We also need to change the offset. So let's bring them in. Okay, uh, and so now they're inside our map. And if you want, you can do the same thing. You can take it off the north and the west, up to you. Uh, and let's do the same thing for our small ticks. Okay, let's offset them by negative one as well. Okay, so it's all nice and clean. Cool, looks good. Um, next thing, uh, we've got our latitude longitude, so I can close that down. Next thing we want, we want our inset map, okay? So here what we can do uh, in our insert map frame, we've got our inset map just here. Let's change the shape, however. We can have it as a rectangle, but for this one, let's go with a circle. And let's click on circle, and then click on the inset map for the map frame. Let's draw that circle about so big. Okay, let's scroll around. There we go. Now, at the moment, it's sort of showing Mato Grosso somewhere in the middle of Brazil, but we wanted to, to highlight where Orca is, where this region is here on this map. Okay, uh, so what we need to do, we need to go to the layout while we clicked on map frame one, which is our inset map. And we need to go activate. Okay, now we can use our mouse wheel to scroll out. Let's go back to zoom out. We can have it at the full extent. Okay. But in this case, we just want it for South America. Okay. So you can scroll the mouse wheel or hold the right button, mouse button and move the mouse up and down to get more precision with your scale. So, okay. I want it about there. Okay. Once you got it to the right area, let's get to layout. So close activation. 
Okay. Uh, then let's click on our, uh, our extent indicator, so insert zone and extent indicator. Okay. Now we want it to show the map frame. The map frame is our original map. That's the extent we want it to show. Okay. Now nothing appears, and that's because it's basically too small. This tiny area of Orca is not going to appear on a map at this scale. Okay. So what we can do, we can sort of cheat our way so it does show something. We right click on the extent and we say properties. Okay, and then you can see here collapse to point. Now, usually, actually up here, usually it'll, it'll, you get this sort of rectangle that's frame. You can click on that, change the color, etc. In this case, collapse to point, let's change it to one. And there you go. You can see there it's appeared in the southeast of Brazil, exactly where Orca is. Obviously, much larger though. Um, what you can do is click on the symbol. You can uh, Change it to the same color, for example, Seville Orange. Let's click on the layers here. You can have an outline. And there you go. So you get that sort of that idea of whereabouts this is. If you wanted to, you could have no color. So something like that. But let's leave it with the color for now. Oops. That one there. Okay. Um, there we go, so it's looking, whoops, looking pretty good so far. Don't slide off. There we go. Uh, so double click here in our map frame and let's add a shadow. Let's go with uh, what 60% gray. There we go, and let's bring that offset down to about two and minus two. Okay, that shadow looks nice for the color. Let's just add some transparency to that, maybe something like 48%. There we go, a nice and transparent shadow there. So again, that sort of stands out. Now at the start, we added this second inset map because that gives us a little bit more flexibility because what we can do, other, basically otherwise, if we didn't, we could still add this, uh, an additional map frame in that would add, be adding the same map, a map frame of this, uh, of this same map twice. Okay, and uh, that way we can only have the same base map on both. Okay, um, and, you, and it's always going to show the data or it's not going to show the data. So you can give yourself a bit more flexibility by adding a different map in. Uh, and that way, if I click on my inset map, for example, I can go to map and the base map, I can change it. So I can say, I want the light gray canvas, for example. Or you can have other other things displayed on here, other field, other attributes, etc. Let's take off the reference. There are my layout. There you go. So you've got that sort of maybe a, a simpler uh, a simpler version. Ooh, the guys here of the trees, I think. Um, the, if that simple version of the of the map there, which I think helps with uh, with the presentation. Okay. Um, so our final step. Uh, we've got basically everything we want. Uh, is to go uh, to share, click on layout, okay, choose the file type, JPEG in this case, choose where you want to save it, okay, compression, quality, all that sort of stuff, and click export. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so you've got your exported file. Um, looking very, very delicious. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time. Ciao.